here we are at the Norrisring and we're psyched to be here because it's the only city circuit in the race calendar and it's going to be a very, very hot race weekend, that's for sure. And before we get racing, let's meet up with the local hero, Marco Wittmann. The Norris Ring. Beloved, feared, but above all, one thing. Prestigious. Whoever wins the highlight of the season on the legendary street circuit becomes one of the greats. When it comes to this year's favourites, his name came up first and foremost. Marco Wittmann. Marco Wittmann. Marco Wittmann. Marco Wittmann, of course, the local, he will be flying. No wonder. For Marco Wittmann, it's a home race. The man from Fert lives just 20 kilometres from the finish line and loves this track like no other. The support from the family, friends, their own fan club will be here on Saturday and Sunday, which is just amazing for me to see all the support from the grandstand, which makes for me that event very, very special. Heartbreaking, a narrow circuit and quite a few bumps. The 2.3 kilometers around the historic stone grandstand has it all. A lap here lasts only about 50 seconds. The local hero knows how to win here. In 2018, the 33-year-old lifted the winner's trophy aloft for the first and last time. A success he would like to repeat. I think it was probably one of my most emotional wins and, 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 and also moments of my career. Um, it, it still brings me goosebumps um, when, when I think about that day. Such a great moment that uh, really I, I, I put it pretty much on the same level as my two DTM title wins. The two-time DTM champion doesn't need motivation for this, neither self-confidence. Fitman recently clinched his first and long-awaited 24-hour race title at Spa. This year marks his 10th race on the street circuit, a special anniversary that he celebrates with a special helmet. My helmet painter Jens Munzer and myself, we thought, uh, let's do a, a special livery for the helmet. And um, we actually put like a collage on the helmet, which shows all my race cars I raced here in DTM from the beginning till last year, um, which, is, which is very cool and unique. So I think something very cool and hopefully it brings me luck. In the current DTM season, Wittmann is getting better and better. At Zandvoort, the BMW works driver just missed the podium, but scored the first points for his new team. Yes, for sure. We are now in, in, in a better situation, but we have to learn every weekend. Even if we win a race, we have to learn further on and uh, we have to be in the dialogue with, with, with all the people around. The, the team is new, brand new, so everybody has to learn. The Norris Ring, a victory at the Franconian Monaco, is something very special for many drivers. For Marco Wittmann, probably even a bit more than that. So let's take a look at this historic street circuit around Nuremberg here in Bavaria. Turn one is a real pinch point as they go into the hairpin at Grundig. Last year, a huge crash in the first race of the weekend, which wiped out almost half of the field. They go through the uh, S-Bend section and then down towards another hairpin at the end of the lap. This is where Kelvin van der Linde's title hopes came unstuck in 2021, a dramatic season finale that year, which saw Maximilian Gutz take the championship title. And Porsche celebrated their first ever victory here at the DTM last year, thanks to Thomas Prining, who also starts on the front row of the grid for this weekend's first race, round five of DTM 2023. Seemingly as ever, a boiling hot weekend awaits the drivers here. And look at the packed grandstand, the Steiner Tribune, which is over 360 metres long. Fans filling it and many of them here to support the local hero, Marco Wittmann, who had an impressive weekend last time out at Zandvoort with a fourth and fifth place finish for his new team, Project One. But it's another BMW driver, Sheldon van der Linde, the reigning champion that has claimed pole position. He's the fifth different pole sitter of the year. Thomas Prining lines up on the front row. 
Ainjin Guven, Lucas Stoltz on row two, Calvin van der Linde and Mirko Bortolotti complete the top six. Dennis Olsen was on the podium last year, but it have to come from 11th to try and repeat that success. And look, down there in the middle of the pack, we got Maro Engel, Christian Engelhardt and Frank Pereira, who've all been race winners this year, showing just how competitive it is. Uh, Jack Aitken in the Ferrari returns after missing the previous round. The Ferraris, though, struggling with top end speed. And they've been asking for some changes to the BOP to try and get them further up the order. A tough race, though, awaits from near the back of the field. Ainjin Guven then on the second row of the grid. He qualified third here on his DTM debut in 2022, but driving a Ferrari. That time, this time, he drives a Porsche. It's always great to see so many families uh, here at the DTM that the ADAC really do cater for family-friendly viewing. And there is Thomas Prining, who will have a clear run to turn one from the outside of row one, looking to repeat his maiden DTM victory success of 2022. But Sheldon van der Linde, it is, that has got the BMW onto pole position. Let's see what the champion can do after a pretty promising weekend last time out at Zandvoort, which saw him return to the podium. You're starting in pole position. Usually you're always the cool kid, but I feel a bit of tension, Sheldon. Well, it's Norris ring. Anything can happen here. Turn one is obviously very important. So, yeah, you call it tension. I just call it focused for turn one. Um, yeah, going to try and do everything to keep Thomas behind me. And then from there on, I think it should be uh, down to pit stops and so on, just getting the crew in the right moment and trying to work our way into the race. And uh, we've got Nick Heidfeld here, former Formula One driver. And in regards to the Norris thing, I mean, it's pretty challenging, pretty tricky. So what are you expecting for the race today? Well, it's always a challenging and interesting first corner. Uh, but I remember very well from years ago, first time I came here, I thought it would be an easy circuit, circuit looking at the layout with four corners, but it's actually very complicated. So the drivers getting ready for round five of DTM 2023. So far this year, we've had four different pole sitters, four different race winners and four different brands taking race victory. So the grid being cleared now as the crowd tries to shade from the immense heat that we've got here. It's going to be a tough race for the drivers. There is no respite here. There's Nick Heidfeld then who raises the Start Your Engines board, a man who uh, competed in 183 Grand Prix in Formula One for teams like Prost, Williams and Renault Formula E driver as well, Nick Heidfeld. Good to see him here. And uh, the drivers now head off then onto the green flag lap. One last chance to get their eye in, get focused on the job ahead and have a plan as such going into turn one where it can all kick off as we've seen previously. There's one of the onboard cameras on board with Marco Bittman, but he's got to try and come from 17th on the grid. Here we go then, Chris Hartley to talk you through round five of DTM 2023 as the lights go out and Sheldon van der Linde leads the charge into the first corner. A good start from my engine Guven here in the blue and red Porsche for Team Bernhard. He's got down the inside of Thomas Brining and he might sneak through to second place. Calvin van der Linde with the black and white Audi trying to follow him through. There's contact between Ricardo Feller and Lauren Heinrich. And Ricardo Feller trying to come from the fifth row of the grid, but I think mostly everybody survived that first corner. But Guven with a great start to get himself up to second place ahead of Thomas Prining and then he got Calvin van der Linde fourth trying to be third, trying to go around the outside and take the blue and white Schubert BMW of Rene Rast with him is he going to get past? Yes he is down the inside of Thomas Prining who's on the back foot here Rene Rast might get him as well so the bright yellow Porsche starting to slip down the pack Get a replay of the start then and watch for the uh, blue and red Porsche of Guven here. Brave down the inside. It was the last of the late breakers. Prining gave him just enough room. Good fair driving, good clean driving as well. And in the middle of the pack, everybody, I think, somehow got through. There were three or four abreast in some cases. The crowd enjoying all the action here. And this was on board with Ricardo Fellow, who's right behind Lucas Stoltz. And uh, you got Lucas Howard charging up the inside of him into the hairpin. There's contact on the middle of the corner. There's a wall awaiting and there is Heinrich on the outside uh, this is what it looked like from Maro Engel's point of view there's Ricardo Feller in the blue and white Audi just ahead and uh, he had uh, Yusuf Avega at the inside of him so he was in a real sandwich there Ricardo Feller uh, race winner last time out at Zandvoort
So Marco Wittmann's had a pretty good start here from 17th up to 11th. He's just tagged the back of Mirko Bortolotti. Though the Lamborghini is sent out wide. The BMW gets through. Laren Heinrich in the Porsche coming through as well. And uh, that's Mirko Bortolotti surviving but losing a couple of places. Christian Engelhart tucks in just behind him. So that puts Wittmann up into 10th place now. Bortolotti dropping down to 12th position. A rear facing on board camera on Marco's Project 1 BMW as well. Looking back at Laren Heinrich. A Porsche Carrera Cup Deutschland champion and a winner in the Porsche Super Cup as well at the British Grand Prix last year. Right, let's get a replay of this. Yeah, just tagged the left rear corner of Bortolotti. He did well, the Italian, to control the car there. He could have easily been off and sent into the side of the Mercedes of Maro Engel, which was just ahead of the pair of them. So we got Guven in second. Rast came through all that melee in turn one to get himself up to third place. Kelvin van der Linde in fourth place. Lucas Auer is fifth. Thomas Prining slipped back to sixth place in the opening laps of the race from the front row of the grid. So Sheldon van der Linde just started to stretch his legs here, looking for his first win of the season. Got his first podium of the season after a difficult round one at Oschersleben and the second weekend at Zandvoort to move himself up the championship table. So there he comes through with Iengen Guven in the car which won the race last year for Porsche at the hands of Thomas Prining. Timo Bernard running that team and running a very quick Turkish driver who's got lots of Porsche experience. The field running through, Yesifa Vega in the pink Mercedes had a difficult start and there's contact between uh, David Schumacher and Luca Engsler and the former TCR Germany champion in the Audi there. He's sent off the road and he's got damage to the car because he's pulled straight off the circuit. So it might be either damage to the suspension or possibly uh, the car's electronics have been knocked. And Christian Engelhart, one of the four race winners this year, won round two of the championship at Oschersleben and he's into an early retirement as well. There's yellow flags at turn one because of Luca Engsler's car, which is off the road, but in a precarious position. And it might just bring about the safety car, this. Get a replay. And Schumacher, pretty robust move. He got up the inside, he got through, but it wasn't without contact. And the Audi, I'm afraid, was immediately pulled into retirement. And a real shame for Luca Engsler, who got into the points in both races last time out at Zandvoort. And because of where he stopped the car, we're going to have our first safety car period of the race. The race back underway on board with Maro Engel here, who is right on the tail of Dennis Olsen, who's made good progress up to seventh place from 11th on the grid in that bright green Porsche. And uh, Dennis, a former front runner in Porsche Super Cup, former Porsche Carrera Cup Germany champion, defending the inside line here from Maro Engel, now a two time winner in DTM. Dennis was a winner last year at Spa, but has some carnage behind. Yusuf Vega, both of the Lamborghinis, Marco Wittmann amongst those involved in it. Wittmann gets going again, but look, he's got now David Schumacher right behind him, which means he's dropped down quite a few places. Yusuf Vega as well, who qualified well. It's been impressive this season. Yusuf Vega, who qualified in the top 10, but he's gone backwards in the race as well. On board with Front Pereira, looking back at the BMW of Marco Wittmann, then, who has now dropped down out of the points to 16th place. Trying immediately to fight back, though, onto the tail of the Lamborghini. Here is Marco Wittmann. Got Mirko Bortolotti just ahead as well. The top 15 these days in the DTM score championship points. So you've got to keep battling out there. Let's get a replay of how it all unfolded. And then Vega went at the inside of Wittmann tagged the back of the Lamborghini and collected as well uh, Marco Wittmann and it was Bortolotti that was sent around others then nipped up the inside to get through and gain positions so Bortolotti and Wittmann can both count themselves unlucky there as we go on board with Jack Aitken he gets a bit of a thud there we can see from the onboard camera in the Ferrari and yeah gets sent into the wall on the exit to the Grundig hairpin a really tough weekend for Jack, who had a terrific debut to get onto the podium in his first race ever in the DTM at Oschersleben. Missed out Zandvoort because he was racing in the IMSA Sports Car Championship, but he'll be back with us for the rest of the season, and we're going to have our second safety car of the race because we've got debris on the circuit. We're also just coming up to the pit window opening, which is between the 20th and 40th minute of the race, the middle third of the race, but the race director has decided to postpone it for now. Right, back underway we go. 
Green flags waved. Every time Sheldon van der Linde builds a lead, builds an advantage, the safety car comes out. They all get back onto his case. But he leads them away here. The green flags wave. We are back up to full speed. Angel Gouven in second place. Then you've got René Raster in third. Coming back into it now, thanks to this safety car in fourth place, is Calvin van der Linde, who's been quick this year, but has had some bad luck, including a retirement in round two at Oschersleben. Qualifying has been tricky at times for Calvin, but there's no doubt about it. There's plenty of pace in that Abt Sports Line Audi. As we get our first pit stop then with Luca Stoltz coming in in the Mercedes. Had a really tough weekend at Oschersleben, but much brighter uh, weekend at Zandvoort for round two. Out he goes. You've got Lauren Heinrich rejoining as well. So coming through shot, Mirko Bortolotti. He's made his pit stop. It cost you almost a lap here. So he's almost a lap down on Sheldon van der Linde, who leads the rest of them through into the hairpin. Pulling away now from Gouven and René Rast is nipping up the inside because the Porsche goes out wide. But I think the Turkish driver is just about going to fend it off and keep the German behind him. Calvin van der Linde, the South African, uh, next up in the queue. Then you've got Marco Wittmann, who's a lap down now because he's made his pit stop and they had that tangle earlier on in the race, coming out of the hairpin. The flashing his headlights here is the three-time champion, René Rast, who missed the second weekend of the season at Zandvoort because he was on Formula E duty. The Schubert Motorsport driver and the BMW's first season as a BMW driver, having been a long-time servant, and a very good one at that for Audi. And Rast needs good points here because he only finished one of the races at Oschersleben, took a pretty strong fifth place. Uh, and retired from race two as his wheel came off after contact and damage to the suspension. And then, of course, he wasn't in action for rounds three or four. So he's way down in 19th place in the championship table. On board then with Thomas Prining, started second, slipped back to sixth. He's back up to fifth now because Lucas Hauer has been and made his pit stop as we get some team radio. Okay, mate, full attack, full attack. We need three quali laps. We need three quali laps. So Brining's race engineer saying, right, you've got to push now. This is an opportunity for us. Get some quick laps in before you make your pit stop. And you might just be able to jump back a few positions. You ride on board with Marco Wittmann, who is having a tough race so far after a very promising early few laps of the race where he gained lots of positions. Into the pit step for Thomas Brining. In he comes, had problems with his pit stops at Oschersleben, one of which, an error by one of the team members, cost him a race win. Oh no, he's been stopped, they've got a problem, and he's been halted, and it's the front left. They're stretching the air jack here. Problem with the wheel nut, I'm guessing, an absolute nightmare. That's taken 20 seconds. Uh, my mechanic, I think, lost the wheel nut. I didn't see it yet, and we need to analyze, of course, to make sure it doesn't happen again, but... This, these things can happen, we just need to make sure it doesn't happen too often. It's a real frustration for Thomas Prining, who lost around about 14 seconds with that uh, botched pit stop. In comes Sheldon van der Linde then from the race lead. Schubert are normally very good at their pit stops. They don't have one hiccup at Oschersleben, but this looks good. He's released, and that's, uh, by my maths, just under eight seconds. That's a decent pit stop. Not record-breaking, but not bad. Can he get out in front of René Rast then? And yes is the answer, and with an extended advantage as well, Rast will catch him up as Sheldon gets the tyres out to temperature, but the Schubert drivers will be 1-2, Calvin van der Linde third. Right, Ayinjin Guven has gone in to make his pit stop. He's the real threat here to Sheldon van der Linde. He has come out just in front. So Guven comes out in the Porsche. But he's got cold tyres here. He's going to have to be super defensive on the way into the hairpin. The BMW's already got its tyres up to temperature. It's got more grip. It's got more traction. And Sheldon van der Linde is going for it here. This essentially is for the lead of the race once everybody else makes their pit stops. And he swoops through and back ahead of Ayinjin Guven, who has now got to try and fend off René Rast. Good luck with that. Really gets through. Calvin van der Linde wants a piece of the action as well in the Abt Sports line. Audi, can he get past uh, the Porsche? The Porsche will uh, try and get the tyres up to temperature now in the second half of the lap. And he's going to fail, though, to stop Kelvin coming through. He's got the Austrian, Lucas Auer, last year's championship runner-up, next for company. And then Dennis Olsen, who was on the podium here, third spot in race one last year, is about to pounce in the sister Porsche as well. So Guren there, decent pit stop, but on cold tyres it takes a lap around here to get them up to temperature and you see really struggled and now Dennis Olsen fast one up the inside of Lucas Auer for fourth place effectively and that's a great move from the Norwegian really good stuff on the brakes and he made it stick so effectively the net leader is Sheldon van der Linde Rast in second Auer in third once all the pit stops are complete 
and you get a real sense of the speed of the cars around the streets of the Norris ring here with those fixed camera angles and just how close they get to the walls as well on the exit to the hairpins. No track limits issues here. You go wide, you go into the wall as Mirko Bortolotti is the next to have a go at Ayenjin Guven, who is pretty robust in his defence, though. The Porsche keeps the Lamborghini behind for now, but it'll be on the back foot when they get to the next hairpin. Here's a replay of that move then from Dennis Olsen. That was on the money. Fantastic move from Dennis to get ahead of Lucas Hour. And Lucas is well known as being the last of the late breakers, so to get down the inside of him was quite an achievement. On board with Thomas Prining then, trying to rescue something from this race. He's back in 13th position. He will score some championship points. But he would have been hoping for a win at the start of the season. As we've got going very slowly all of a sudden. Calvin van der Linde, who is pushing for a podium finish, his first of the year. But the car is ailing, I'm afraid, with less than five minutes left on the clock. And that is heartbreak for Calvin. Past him comes his teammate Ricardo Faller. Marco Wittmann's going to come past him as well. And yet more heartbreak for Calvin van der Linde and the team. The pedal shift was broken, so I couldn't shift up anymore, which is obviously at a track like this where you're shifting a lot of times in every lap. It, it doesn't help, but uh, we try to fix it for tomorrow. Season just not quite happening for Calvin van der Linde, but maybe his luck will change tomorrow. We're on the final lap of the race. At least he's going to get victory for his brother here, it seems, because Sheldon van der Linde is almost home and dry. René Rast is on course for his first ever podium with BMW in the DTM. And Dennis Olsen, with a great drive from 11th on the grid to third place, is going to round out the podium. Lucas Auer, with his best result of the season as well, still recovering from a huge injury that he had in the IMSA Sports Car Championship at the start of the year. Here we go then, out of the final turn, and it is victory for Sheldon van der Linde. Yeah, <laughs> yes, baby! B1, B2! Amazing drive, mate! Yes! <laughs> Woo! What? Do was ready as well, man. Fuck! Amazing day, boys. Well done. Amazing. So a 1-2 finish for Schubert Motorsport. Sheldon van der Linde becomes the fifth different race winner from five races. And his teammate, Renny Rast, comes home in second place. Third to Dennis Olsen, Lucas Auer fourth, Ayengin Guven in fifth place, and Mirko Bortolotti with more good points. Mr. Consistent in sixth place. Maro Engel, Ricardo Feller, Marco Wittmann, and Laren Heinrich round out the top 10 from the first race of the weekend after nearly 70 laps of tough, hot racing around the streets of Nuremberg. From Pereira in 11th place, Thomas Prining in 12th, Arjun Maini, David Schumacher and Mick Wieshover are the other points finishers inside the top 15. Frustration for Jack Aitken in the Ferrari. Let's see if they can improve their luck in race two. And Kelvin van der Linde amongst the retirees after that first race of the weekend here at the Norris Ring. Huge celebrations then for Sheldon van der Linde. It was all doom and gloom after a really difficult opening weekend at Oschersleben. But he's now got his first win of the season and his fifth career win in DTM. That's not so easy at Norris Ring because you don't really get into a, a rhythm. You look in your mirror every lap out of turn one and you think, OK, the guys are getting closer, further away. So you're managing the risk you take here and you know that one uh, mistake could end up in the wall. So it's, it's very difficult to, to lead. Um, you're always the first guy to arrive if there's dust on the track or whatever. So not easy, but amazing to win here. Terrific drive, well-deserved victory for Sheldon van der Linde. He hoists the trophy aloft, much to the delight of Schubert Motorsport. And Thomas Helmer uh, presents the trophy to René Rast for second place, the former European Championship Cup winner for Borussia Dortmund. René Rast then with his first podium of the year. Yeah, very happy about it. Race, result, race result, obviously, from P7 to P2 is a good, good achievement. So, yeah, we secure double podium, uh, double uh, victory, actually, which is amazing. Excellent drive as well from Dennis Olsen. Another one to pick up his first podium of 2023. Last year we had kind of the similar thing where we started in the back and came to the podium. Um, but we don't have the same safety car procedure as last year with the restart. So I didn't expect to gain that much. But yeah, super happy for it. So that's the first race of the weekend complete here at the Norris Ring. Let's see what tomorrow brings. Just around the corner from the racetrack is the home of the established German football club, Erster FC Nuremberg. 
it's a perfect opportunity for apt racing drivers to swap race suits for football shirts. Ricardo Feller and Kelvin van der Linde competed in a penalty shootout against the Nuremberg players, Lulu Gattenberger and Kerstin Bogenschutz. The girls who've just been promoted to the first Bundesliga showed the Audi drivers some tricks on the turf. Are you ready to burn some rubber? We are here at the Norrisring and it is hot and we are so ready for race day two here at the beautiful Norrisring. It's an amazing uh, circuit where we already saw so much action yesterday and we're really looking forward to a lot of action today as well, that's for sure. It's over 30 degrees today and that means that the track temperature is over 40 degrees and it's really burning hot. So the crowd lined up, getting ready for the start of another 60-minute plus one lap race round six of the championship. We'll see Sheldon van der Linde starting third. And after yesterday's win, he's gone from eighth all the way up to second place in the championship, just behind Thomas Prining. And he'll be just behind Tommy on the grid. He's qualified second. Another front row start. Can he turn this one into a podium? On pole position, though, for a 25th time in his DTM career, now equaling the record of the great Bernd Schneider is René Rast. And from the sixth row of the grid, the home fans will be cheering on Marco Wittmann. It's incredible. The atmosphere, the vibe here at the North Ring is just unique. It's just amazing to see all the people around here cheering for me, supporting me, especially with the Green Wall, with the Scheffler people. Um, it's, it's just great, you know, to, to have such a support. Right then, this is how they're going to shape up for today's race. René Rast and Thomas Prining on the front row. Sheldon van der Linde and Lauren Heinrich with the best qualifying so far in DTM are on road two. Angel Guven and Mirko Bortolotti complete the top six with Olsen Stoltz, Kelvin van der Linde and Frank Pereira also up there in the top ten. Further back, Marco Wittmann starts 11th, but that's better than yesterday's race. Christian Engelhardt also with a slightly better qualifying this time out, starts in 12th position. Tim Heinemann, who led the championship after the first weekend at Oschersleben, is back in 19th position, just behind race winner from Zandvoort, Maro Engel. Further back amongst those with work to do is Mick Wieshover. He starts 24th. He got his first DTM points in Saturday's race. So then the driver's ready to go. There to the right of the picture is Maximilian Goetz, the 2021 DTM champion. He won both the races here in the season finale that year to take the championship crown. René Rast knows all about winning championships. The three-time champion is going to start from pole position. It's going to be very hot in, uh, in the car as well. Um, it's going to be a challenge for the car, the driver, for mechanic, for everybody. So, yeah, let's see who's uh, surviving it the best. It's 33 degrees outside. It is around about 55 degrees inside the cockpits of these cars. So it's going to be incredibly physical for the drivers around a short but frenetic lap here at the Norris Ring. Uh, so there is Thomas Helmer. We saw him yesterday on the podium. The ex-German footballer is going to send them off onto the formation lap and the crowd wait in anticipation. Here we go then, it's Thomas Prining, the championship leader coming into this race. Alongside him, the champion of three times, René Rast. They're the front row of the grid. And the reigning champion, Sheldon van der Linde, is just behind them as the lights go out. We go racing here for the second time at the Norwich Ring. A really good start for Sheldon van der Linde, looking the second of the BMWs. The red and yellow machine is alongside and now ahead of Thomas Prining. Thomas is going to be stranded on the outside line. I engine Guven's had another good start. He's come up from the third row of the grid and he's going to go to third place. Dennis Olsen in the green Porsche with a good start as well. He's right on the case of Thomas Prining. They're still side by side, the two Porsches in the battle for third place. But I think I engine Guven has got the position sorted so down to fourth place from second on the grid for Thomas Prining he didn't have a great start to the race yesterday it's been a bit better today but not where he wanted to be and he goes straight back on the attack here to try and get that third place back away from my engine Guven in the red and blue Porsche there's nothing doing there and he has to sit tight and he has to watch the mirrors as well with Dennis Olsen just behind him in fifth place and Mirko Bortoletto just behind him in sixth place at the end of the first lap of the race. It's side by side just behind as well with Calvin van der Linde on the attack here with Lauren Heinrich who qualified fourth in the black and white Porsche but has dropped back on the first lap of the race as well. Calvin van der Linde down the inside and he's got the position all the way through the Grundig hairpin. 
So a decent start to the race for Kelvin van der Linde. He finished third in that dramatic 2021 season behind Maximilian Goetz and Liam Lawson, who is uh, now a reserve driver in Formula One uh, for Red Bull Racing. And look at this, Kelvin van der Linde in seventh place, already onto the tail of Bortolotti as they go over the start finish line and charge towards the Grundig hairpin the Audi is in the slipstream there's that right hand kink and then you have a chance to dive down the inside if there's a gap on the way into the hairpin there's no gap the Italian covers off the line and then Heinrich coming back at the pair of them in the Porsche they are 6th, 7th and 8th these three just beyond them in ninth place is Lucas Stoltz and a good start for Lucas Arrow who didn't qualify well after a good race yesterday but there the blue and white Mercedes has made good progress already to be up into the top 10 with Marco Wittmann holding station 11th on the grid 11th in the race at the moment can he get something special out of this both cars behind you are under investigation both cars behind you are under investigation interesting team radio tells lucas how that the two cars behind him are being looked at by the stewards well that's vitman and Pereira. so could this spell trouble for the 2014 and 2016 dtm champion marco vitman does a replay reveal what we're looking at? Well, that was close to coming together at a very high speed between Pereira in the Lamborghini, Vitman in the BMW. Here's the onboard view. He was off the road, wasn't he, Vitman? There was some contact there. And over the white lines, squeezed as well by the French driver, who was probably a bit wound up by having that little tag on the left rear corner of the car. So that's been looked at. That was the perspective just behind of Maro Engel in the Mercedes. Hard battling out there, some aggressive moves, but you have to take your chances in DTM and especially around this place. Meanwhile, Thomas Prining now getting into his groove, starting to come back a little bit at Engine Guven. Hey, Tommy, how's it going? You are stuck behind Guven, you can confirm. Yeah, <laughs> Copy, copy. Keep going, keep going. We are considering plans. Exactly that. He cannot find a way past. So Guven is now perhaps holding his progress up. And therefore, they might try something different with the pit stops once the pit window opens to try and get past the Porsche of Guven that way. On board with Thomas Prining, you ride then. Turns left into the Grundig hairpin. Continues to... Watch the battle that's going on ahead between Sheldon van der Linde and Ian Jenguven for second place. Bortolotti in sixth place, van der Linde in seventh, Heinrich in eighth is still a battle which is raging on as well. And there in the background, Ricardo Feller is going on the attack here to try and get around the outside of Christian Engelhardt, but runs wide, runs deep, just outbreaks himself. It's a good effort, but he just ran out of brakes, ran out of road. That would have been a brave move around the outside, but Ricardo, in the end, had to bail. Here's another look at it. He got ahead, but he couldn't get around the corner. Luckily, there's a fair bit of runoff there, and he was able to survive the Audi trying to charge up from a lowly grid position. This is how it looked on board with Ricardo. The inside line's covered, so I'll go the outside line. Trouble with that, more distance to cover, less grip generally around the outside. There's him running wide. Looks in the mirrors and a little shake of the head from the Swiss driver. Frustrating day so far for him out there in these very hot conditions. Two drivers you wouldn't normally expect to be fighting for 10th place here. Lucas Auer and Marco Wittmann. You see they run out onto the pavement there. That's a change of grip level which you have to be careful with, not to understeer into the wall. Behind them they've got from Pereira. He's had a real up and down season this year. He won the very first race of the championship at Oschersleben get to get his first victory in DTM and it's also the first ever victory for Lamborghini in the DTM. So far this year, we've had five races, five different winners and five different brands have taken a victory apiece. On board with Marco Wittmann then. It's great low-slung onboard camera looking through the grill of the BMW M4. Gets very close to the Austrian under braking. But look, the Mercedes is able to just scamper at the distance on the way out of the corner over the bumps on the way into the right left S-Bend section where they get extremely close to the inside wall. Rene Ras continuing to lead the race. Sheldon van der Linde in second, Engine Guven in third. And into the pits has come Thomas Priding. So the team have brought him in early, right at the start of the pit window opening up. Fingers crossed, they have a much cleaner pit stop than they had yesterday. Pressure on here. 
So that's a good job done for the Manti EMA team. And Priming will rejoin in clean track, but there's been some drama down at the hairpin. are coming together between David Schumacher and Patrick Niederhauser as they both try to get going again. Yeah, for me, uh, it was a very unlucky situation. I mean, in our car, in the Mercedes, if uh, we brake too hard or we brake uh, very hard, sometimes it happens. If you just catch a bump or whatever it is, uh, that the car goes very hard into the ABS and then it's just slipping down the straight. So, on board with Thomas Prining as he gets past uh, David Schumacher, who's got uh, terminal damage, I would say, uh, to the Mercedes. The front left corner looks rather second-hand. I'm afraid uh, David is out of the race, as in come uh, Sheldon van der Linde and our engine Guven. So, second and third into the pits together. Further down the pit lane are Schubert Motorsport. So, a race between the pit crews here. They have to be calm. But they have to be quick, and that's a good pit stop as well. He retains the advantage over the team. Bernhard Porsche, the number 24 car, comes out now. And there is Thomas Prining, who is going to leapfrog him. The plan worked for Mantai. So Thomas Prining gets ahead of Ienjin Guven. And actually, he's not going to be that far behind Sheldon van der Linde. So effectively, once all the pit stops sort themselves out, he's moved himself from fourth up to third. And in now, we've got the race leader, Rene Rast. Schubert release, the three-time champion. Out he goes. Hits the white line, hits the gas, and is about to rejoin. And in the background there, you can see the red and yellow BMW of Sheldon van der Linde, still quite a long way back. Second of the pit stoppers, but with Thomas Prining, all of a sudden breathing down his neck. And that's because uh, Sheldon was getting the tyres up to temperature for a lap or so. A little nibble at the inside here for Tommy. But the Austrian has to sit tight for now. The South African keeps him behind. The reigning champion making that BMW as wide as he can at the moment as they go through the S-Bend section, out onto the pavement, almost brushing the wall. You've got to get on the throttle as quickly, as hard as you can. But if you misjudge it ever so slightly around here, you are in big trouble. Right, the Porsche still stuck behind the BMW, still trying to find a way through. If he can get past here somehow, he might have a chance with lots of laps, lots of time remaining in the race to go for a race win. He's been a two-time race winner in DTM. It's only his second season, Thomas Brining, the former Porsche Carrera Cup Deutschland champion. Car 24 under investigation for spinning wheels on the air jack. That's Ienjin Guven. So they're looking at that as in... He spun the wheels, he accelerated while the car was still up on the jacks, which is not allowed. Kelvin van der Linde, with a clean pit stop, gets back underway, looking for his best results of the season after the disappointment of missing out on a podium in Saturday's race due to his uh, problem with the paddle shift. Right there, through comes the blue BMW of Rast, followed by Sheldon van der Linde, Thomas Prining, and then Kelvin van der Linde. Pit stop, I really don't know what happened. We lose so much time, then we get penalty. I don't know, we need to analyze. I'm, I'm sad for sure and emotional, but yeah, I will keep fighting. ING and Guven then is going to have to serve a penalty lap. He's coming to the penalty box here, has to adhere to the speed limit of 50k. That's going to cost him about five seconds or so, and that will totally scupper any chances of a fight back for a potential podium finish now. Now look at this, that is Thomas Prining with a move on replay, getting up the inside of Sheldon van der Linde. So that's a net second place. He's been nibbling away at the BMW for two or three laps and finally, from a long way back actually, squeezes out the inside. That was a really, really good move from Thomas Prining. And in fairness, Sheldon van der Linde didn't squeeze him too tight, gave him the room to come through. Also, a good scrap going on here between Marco Bortolotti. Uh, then you've got the green Porsche of Dennis Olsen squeezing past or trying to squeeze past Kelvin van der Linde, who's already lost out to the Lamborghini. And then Laren Heinrich coming into the mix as well in the black and white Porsche, trying to squeeze past Dennis Olsen here. He's got the run, he's got the inside line, and he gets through and gains the place. Nice move that as he tries to continue his recovery after that bad first lap where he dropped back on fourth on the grid having had a really good qualifying to get on the second row this morning all right let's get a replay how did all of this start well look at that Mirko Bortolotti had a nibble up the inside of Kelvin van der Linde 
He nicked the back of the Audi. There was contact. There was bodywork flying up. The Lamborghini went all over the kerbs. Quite a robust move, but he made it fit just about. Right, on board with Thomas Priding, trying to catch the race leader. Let's get some team radio. Hey, Tommy, race update. 31 laps to go, 31 laps. You're closing in, car to the front for the lead. Gap is 1.7, 1.7. So Thomas Prining now gets his head down, works his way through the traffic and tries to target the race leader, Rennie Rast, or the driver that will be the race leader once all the pit stops are complete. There he is, Rennie Rast then, and uh, Prining is definitely closing in here. Homing in on the BMW, on the brakes they go. This is the battle for the race victory. Both drivers looking for their first win of the season. If either of them win the race, that makes it six races and six different winners. What a season we're already having here in the DTM. This is going to be quite a battle to really determine drivers here. And they're going to push like crazy for the next 20 minutes or so to try and get the maximum 25 championship points. On board with Thomas Prining, not quite close enough to attack yet, but really starting to pile the pressure on to uh, Rene Rast's BMW. Schubert Motorsports, that one-two finish yesterday. Mante EMA, the team that run Thomas Priding this year, his new team for this year. And there he looks to the inside, and he sends it down the inside, all over the kerbs. I think there was some contact as well, but at the last possible millisecond, Thomas Priding pulled out and chatted it at the inside. That was a karting-type movie. He's a former European karting champion. Olaf Mante there to the left of the picture, the founder of the team, with a wry smile on his face. They enjoyed that. I don't think Rennie Rast did, though. He's flashing his headlights. A bit wound up by all of that, but look at this. He switched back. Rennie tried to come into the corner, found a Porsche there. And that was tight, but he made it through. Uh, he falls his way, man. Yes, give us the thing, uh, so there, the team radio reveals exactly what Rene Rast thought of that. He was not impressed. Manti were very impressed with their young charge. Here's another look at it. <laughs> that was on the limit, wasn't it? He had to go on the kerb. He had to ride the kerb because the track had disappeared by that point. He was so late making the move. Schubert not impressed on the uh, pit garage wall either. So battle continuing to rage on between Portalotti and van der Linde. Portalotti having passed van der Linde a few laps ago. They are battling for fourth and fifth positions. And Calvin, if he gets fourth or fifth, that'll be his best result of the season so far. One top six finish, but also a DNF in the opening weekend at Oschersleben. The car has been quick. The driver we know is quick. The luck hasn't always been with him so far this season, but it's a long season ahead. And the one good thing for Calvin is that with all these different race winners, potentially, nobody is really putting a big charge on at the head of the championship table. You get a win and a podium, and suddenly you're right back in the fight, very much in the fight here, is van der Linde. They're also reeling in the two Schubert BMWs. These pair are quicker at the moment than Rast and Sheldon van der Linde. And looking to the inside here is Kelvin van der Linde, who's not shy in coming forward himself. I know that was quite a robust move from uh, the Italian, but Kelvin can have a big go when he wants to as well. So it could be quite an enjoyable fight, this from a neutral's point of view. Final lap of the race. Thomas Prining has got this one sewn up. He's had some frustrations this year. He should have had a race win at Oschersleben. He is now going to get a race win here at the Norris Ring because there is the flag. Okay, mate. Checkered flag is out. Checkered flag is out. This is what we came for. Well done. P1, P1. This maximum fuel safe. Maximum fuel safe, fuel safe. And all pick up. Clean the track. Take pick up as much as possible. Drink the bottle. And maximum fuel safe, mate. Well done. Well, Thomas Prining's dad there in the garage celebrating his son's third DTM race victory at the scene of his maiden victory last year. He wins from Rennie Rast and Sheldon van der Linde. Uh, Mirko Bortolotti and Kelvin van der Linde with a close battle for fourth place. Olsen was sixth, Heinrich seventh, Guven, Engel and Stoltz rounded out the top ten in the second race of the weekend. Lucas Auer, Front Pereira, Marco Wittmann, Ricardo Feller and Arjun Miney were the other points finishers inside the the top 15. Thomas Prining 
extends his championship lead. Sheldon van der Linde will lead the Norris Ring second with Ricardo Feller third in the table. It's cool, honestly. And already at the track work, I had goosebumps. It was obviously last year my, my my breakthrough, let's call it, in DTM, where I could really prove myself. And to be able to do it again now in, in such cool fashion, obviously, fighting a legend like, like René is, is amazing. And obviously to come out on top in such a fight is even better. A good weekend, though, for René Rast with two second-place finishes. It was a very hard one, indeed. Um, you came from very, very far back and... Uh, break very late and uh, hit me middle of the corner um, it's not what we agreed in driver's briefing but yeah um, you know um, it's still 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 a good race for us it was for sure a hard maneuver but uh, that's how it is no points last year at the Norris ring for Shelton van der Linde this time a first and a third yeah it's amazing I mean uh, to come away with two podiums here um, on one weekend is always a good weekend regardless of where it is but here in Norris ring it always feels more special with all the fans and the vibe and um, it's just amazing to be back on the podium again. Well, as ever, Norris Ring has delivered both on and off the track. Another fantastic weekend here in Bavaria. What an exciting race weekend we had here at the Norris Ring. It was a very hot race weekend here at the DTM, but also very exciting. But it was not only the DTM racing, but also the ADAC GT Masters. So check this out. It's the second round of the ADAC GT Master season and we are at the Norris Ring, a 2.3 kilometer track in Nuremberg. It was Salmon and Vega who earned pole position in morning qualifying, taking the Landgraf Mercedes to the top and he holds on to the lead at the start despite an attack by Janis Fitcher in the Huber Motorsport Porsche. Benjamin Heites in the Grasser Racing Lamborghini is in third position and Tim Zimmerman in the Porsche is fourth. But the start procedure is judged to be incorrect. As a result of their incorrect start positions, both drivers are forced to serve a penalty lap and fall to the end of the field. There's a fight between Zimmerman and Eduardo Cossetang in the BMW. He pushes his opponent into a spin and as a result receives a triple penalty lap. As The result of all of this is that Tim Zimmerman and Jackson Evans lose their overall lead in the driver's standings. Kozateng and Ben Green were third overall coming into the race at the Norris Ring. They also fall back. An intense battle between Benjamin Heites and Petra Umber Rescue in the Hout Racing Mercedes brings the fans to their feet on the legendary stone grandstand seats. Heites ultimately prevails in the Grasser Racing Lamborghini. Around the corner they come, fighting hard for position. The obligatory driver change between minutes 25 and 35 are coming soon. And it's Maxi Gertz who will celebrate his comeback at the Norris Ring in the ADAC GT Masters, the series in which he won the championship in 2012. He is driving together with Petra Umbra Rescue this weekend as regular driver Arjun Maini is competing in the DTM. Two races in different racing series on one weekend at one racetrack are prohibited by the regulations. Marco Mapelli has taken over the Grasser Racing Lamborghini and loses his right wing mirror and it's always inch perfect alongside the track boundaries. Elias Seppinen, who has taken over the Landgraf Mercedes from Salmon Ovega, takes a commanding victory for the duo. Behind, in second position, in the blue and red foiled Huber Motorsport Porsche of Janis Fitcher and Nico Menzel, is third position Finn Gershitz and Sven Muller, who now take the overall lead in the driver's classification. It's a first ever win in the ADAC GT Masters for Salmon Vega and Elias Seppen and second Janis Fitcher, Nico Menzel and Finn Gersitz and Sven Muller rounding out the top three. The crowd in the glorious sunshine here at the Norris Ring being thoroughly entertained in this, the third race of a 12 race season in the ADAC GT Masters. It is the fourth race of the 2023 ADAC GT Masters season. As usual, getting underway with a flying start. At the end of the field, a textbook jump start by Kim Louis Schramm, earning him a penalty lap, which he has to serve immediately. At the front, pole man Nico Menzel had edged Sven Muller in the yellow blue Porsche by eight thousandths of a second. And the third brand colleague directly behind him, Jackson Evans, who initially passes Sven Muller in the turmoils of the start phase, moving him up to second. 
Nico Menzel enters the race with 10 kilos of success ballast due to second place on Saturday, whereas Sven Muller had to load 5 kilos. Their competition confidently defends top spot, blocking off all attacks and maintaining the lead until the obligatory pit stop. Sven Muller stayed out the longest, had a free run while in the lead, building a gap before handing the car over to 18-year-old Finn Gersitz from Stuttgart, who exited pit lane still in the lead. Nico Menzel handed over his vehicle to Janis Fitcher. Here we can see on the left of the picture how Gersitz gets back out on track. He should be able to maintain his gap for the remainder of the race. However, their rivals are not ones for giving up, mounting a comeback, edging closer and closer. Janes Fischer really goes full throttle and drives Gersitz into a mistake. He slides off the ideal line. Fischer is ready to pounce immediately and finds himself in the lead. Behind them, there are three Mercedes drivers. They also engage in fierce battles among themselves. Salman Ovega's attack on the inside after a lap-long duel succeeded against Valente from Switzerland and it finally paid off. The Landgraf Motorsport Mercedes passing the HRT racing car here. In the end, it was a slim win for Menzel and Fitcher, with the top three very close together. And with the victory, their first of the current season, Nico Menzel and Janis Fitcher also take the lead in the driver's standings. Here, the results on screen, with Fitcher, Menzel, ahead of Gersitz, Muller, and Zimmerman, Evans. A triple success for Porsche on Sunday at the Norris Ring. And the gentleman really deserved a proper cool-down after the battle at the hot cauldron of the Norris Ring. We promised you a hot weekend and that's what we had, not only in regards to the heat, but also in regards to all the action. And now we're looking forward to the Nürburgring in four weeks. So that's it from the Norris Ring. Bye-bye.